Transformative technologies, it's tech for mental health, emotional well-being, and human thriving. This presentation is going to give you a landscape overview, the way that I see this world. I put this up again because it really helps anchor and show the spectrum of the human mind and how it ties to very important categories. I want you to read the second line, future basic skills, future of work, future of life. On this psychological human spectrum, on one end, we are supporting those in need. The middle is the human condition. This is what it means to be human and what it means to develop the skills in order to navigate all of the changes that are coming, as well as to be prepared for them. So we're going to talk a little bit about the future of work and what it means in terms of social-emotional skills, which I believe sit on top of self-awareness and the ability to uh, emotionally self-regulate. And then the last category, which is really about what's possible. You know, one of the things that I found shocking is that there's over 40,000 funded studies on depression, and there's less than 400 on joy, right? You know, so what really is possible for human beings? And what's really unique and special about this community is that it contains the full spectrum. And when we first started this work, one of the things that was really funny is as we were trying to divide and categorize technologies or products, uh, we found that in many cases, the same hardware and software works across the spectrum. The difference is the program, the content. Um, so, you know, I've seen things that are used to support people with PTSD and the exact same hardware and software systems support high performers. It's all the same thing. And that's exciting because it means that one part of the spectrum can fund and support the other, depending on where the entrepreneurs and innovators start their journey. And so the big question is really, why now? So this is our fourth year. Three years ago when we started this, there were 350 people. We were at Sophia with Liz Lee, who I believe is here. And it was just the beginning. This year, our fourth year, we're at 750 and had to uh, cut off ticket sales. And there are thousands more watching around the world. Because something's changed, something's happened. And it's this confluence of need, demand, and means. And this is very important and it's very exciting because when these three things come together, you can make a market. And so before this happens, you don't have that momentum. But when these three things come together, you can make a market. So I'm going to talk about need, demand, and means so you understand why this is the perfect time for you to be building what you're building, investing the way that you're investing, and participating in this community the way that you have brought yourselves here to do so. So the World Health Organization estimates that by 2030, depression will be the leading disease burden. And it's already the world's leading disability. And all around the world, we see an acceleration in stress, anxiety. People are clearly having a hard time. Loneliness, widespread, and even people who are surrounded by people are also, when asked in many surveys, are they lonely? Um, they say yes. Another element of need. We've all heard about the future of work and the rise of the software line and automation. And what does that mean? The statistics for how many jobs will be eliminated are all over the place. So much so that it's clear that nobody knows. And I've seen everything from 800 million jobs to 46% of all tasks. 
So the tasks or the elements of contribution that are left are actually the ones that are related to social emotional skills, emotional intelligence, happiness, connection, trust building, problem solving, all of the things that have sort of been covered up in some ways by the rote work that had to be done. And so what's really exciting but also scary about this is that the social emotional skills that are going to be the future of work, creativity, collaboration, communication, problem solving, innovation, are things that we expect people to pick up from the culture. If you're lucky, if you had the right parents, if you had the right mentor. And so this is a very, there's a big gap here. And so if you think about the number of people who are employed, how do they cross the chasm from the way that work is defined today to what will be required in order to be employable in this future? that the only difference between a pessimist and an optimist is how quickly they think it's coming. So the future of work is the future of the human mind. But we have something else on our side, which is demand. So most of these stats are about um, Western millennials, but the global millennials have more in common um, than any other generation at any other time. They want to be happy. And they want, they want uh, meaning. So some signals of this is that, uh, you know, they, in the US, they spend a fourth of their disposable income on well-being already. Um, they believe that business should make a contribution to the challenges in the world. Um, and they want organizations to prepare them for the changes that are coming. This is from one of our, our fantastic sponsors, Deloitte. This is some of their research, and they've got a lot of great research. And so we talked earlier today about the technology that is driving this. This is means. So you have the exponentials. You have technology being that force that can take what is scarce and make it abundant. And so all of our technologies are on exponential curves. But human development is not yet there. But we need it to be in order to catch the things that I've mentioned to you, which is why I'm so grateful for you having participated in the workshop today and sending me your thoughts. And so there's also a large number of other disruptions that are coming all over the place. Life is changing very quickly. And so this is what this looks like. If you think about all the other applications of technology you've seen, to date, all the technology is really about the bottom levels of the hierarchy. But what some of the things that you'll see during the rest of this conference will show you is that we have the ability, because of the exponentials, to start to penetrate the higher levels of the hierarchy. And that represents about today a $3 trillion market opportunity. And that is important because, again, you need sustainable businesses in order to create the kind of movement that will allow you to up level the mental and emotional well being of 2 billion people. This is where these numbers come from. This is how people are spending money today in these areas. There's some that are really small, like right now, Neurotech is only 8.4 billion. Um, this is a today uh, estimate. Um, but, you know, if you've read Homo Deus or if you think about any of these things, then you know that in the coming decades, that number in that box is going to get huge. And so this is what transformative tech is. It's an ecosystem that is dedicated to all of this. You know, we are seeking with the organizations that we have um, to build a community and an ecosystem where innovators and entrepreneurs can 
build products that help people. One of the things that's special and wonderful about our community is that people are willing to contribute their first attempts in learning, also called failures, but for us, first attempts in learning, because if we contribute that, then other people don't all have to make the same mistakes again. So one of the things you're going to hear from the speakers is that they're going to be like, this is what we learned. And they're going to be very open and sharing with you about what they learned. In addition, people modeling their successes. So, um, you know, every single time someone in this community wins, I send them an email and, and, and I um, support them in their successes. Very important because it allows us to move more quickly. And so one of the things that we did over the summer is we did a Transformative Technology Academy and we found over a thousand people in 69 countries and 450 cities who are either currently building this technology or they want to. And the want to's are also equally important because it's such an emerging sector that many of the people who will build great companies are currently doing something else. The number of calls that I get from Google, Facebook, <laughs> you know, lots of people who are currently doing something else, but they want to do this, uh, is high. So, you know, it's an emerging category. What transformative technology does is it allows us to use technology to get at these things about humanity to get at purpose, self-awareness, the ability of the biosignals, HRV, GSR, EEG, to show what's happening to human state, and the ability to, for humans to train. Humans love feedback. Learning to walk, gravity is a feedback mechanism. Learning to talk, do people understand you? It's a feedback mechanism. And so when our bodies become revealed to us in a way that is private and safe, then we have the ability to accelerate our self-understanding. And these things are not intended to replace our own ability to self-regulate. But in a world where we aren't taught these things, where it's a very elite opportunity to go on retreat, the ability to have technology that are scaled to help people in this is extraordinary. So there's 11 major areas of transformative technology that you guys all represent. And these slides will be on SlideShare afterwards. Um, this was the Transformative Tech 200. This was 2017. In 2017, there was 1.6 billion in funding in these companies um, on the, the top line, it doesn't include the big outliers, which are some of the ecosystem players. And so you see things like assistance, intelligence assi intelligent assistance. Why can't AIs challenge our meaning making? Your personal buddy, you know, not one to be shared. Uh, when meaning making is one of the most important skills for um, success in life. Emotion recognition pattern recognition, mood management, HRV training, behavior change, wearables, consumer EEG, all-in-one devices, sleep, meditation, haptics, you know, technology after technology, company after company, where you can use technology to start to get at the higher levels of the hierarchy. AR, VR, and so some of the things that I see happening in 2019, um, you can read the other ones, but I want to talk a moment about number five. Essential to this is that we have to take the privacy and ethical and data ownership issues head on. People have to be able to feel safe using these products. And so on day two, we are going to have hours of this because we have a panel and then we have a workshop. And so this is a community where we take these things seriously. Not so much to, in the sense like, it's important not to limit innovation, but it's absolutely important for entrepreneurs and innovators to be able to think about this as they build their products and as they go to market. 
because a lot of these decisions are micro decisions that happen along the way. And so who we are while we're making the things that we build is as important as what we build. So the next human agenda, happiness, augmentation, and longevity. I put this up here because happiness is clearly transformative tech. Um, if you know Yuval Harari, he's a meditator. So this happiness is kind of a, a, a big word. It includes a lot of things like meaning, belonging uh, within it. But he says this so people can connect to it. This is coming. And so when you think about things about, you know, why make, what makes people happy? One, purpose, autonomy, and mastery is one theory of happiness. Another one um, is, and this is by Omar Haik, who's an economist who I follow in the UK. But I love this, and this is, you can see where the title of the conference came from. When you are growing, when you have this expression of possibility, and that anger is the frustration of possibility, and that sadness is the loss of possibility, and in a world that is so changing, the only security is in growth and a sense of purpose, because everything else around us is changing. So just think about that mo a moment. The only security is truly in a growth and a sense of purpose. And so what transformative technology represents, I see those three buckets in shorthand three ways. One, we put the fires out. That's helping people with stress, anxiety, depression. Two, we get the skills in place. That's helping people with the future of work skills. It's helping them with self-awareness, emotional self-regulation, communication, creativity, the ability to connect. And then three, because I have a background in gaming, we unlock the bonus levels to really discover what is possible for humanity and to push into that. Um, as we explore where we're going and what, what does that mean. I do believe that we can solve the social problem. I do. And the wonderful thing is that it's not a mystery in the sense that we know that the human mind is trainable. We know that compassion is trainable. We know that all of these skills that are going to be essential for the future, they are all trainable. And now we have the means, we have the demand, and we have the need combined to make it so. And so, I got this from M Mikey Siegel, actually. There is no more nobler use of technology than to bring peace to the minds of humankind. And so that is why we are here. And thank you for your time.